What's up guys? Today we're gonna to look at one of my absolute favorite topics, the Kimura. Uh, the Kimura is a grip, a two-on-one grip that is popular in all grappling martial arts and probably martial arts that don't involve grappling because it's such a powerful grip. Uh, it's a it's a tool to me, it's a Swiss army knife where I can use it to escape, I can use it to attack, I use it to defend, I can use it standing, I can use it on the ground, I can use it in a bad position, I can use it in a great position. Uh, it's a very, very powerful tool. In fact, sometimes I make a statement saying that uh, you can almost model a whole game uh, you know, a whole style off of just using a Kimura grip. So in today's video and a lesson, we're gonna hit it from a lot of different spots, from standing against a cage, on the ground, from defense, and offense, all that as, and well, as well as getting a little funky. But as always in uh, tri tack we're gonna hit it from a, a more of a sport, self-defense, and then survival perspective, where you're looking at the ways to use it in all those scenarios and how powerful this grip is. As always, be sure to subscribe and follow tri tack Martial Arts and everything we do, as well as Channel Fight Masterclass. Thank you for watching. All right, guys, let's get into one of my favorite topics of all time, combat, the Kimura. Uh, it has a lot of different names, but we call it Kimura. Uh, Japanese Jiu-Jitsu, Reverse Udigarami, but it's the fucking Kimura. It's, uh, it's probably one of my favorite grips in, in, in combat, whether you're just doing uh, uh, MMA, uh, self-defense, or, or sport. It's just a, a very useful tool. It is a submission, it is a break, but it's also a tool that we can use a lot to get out of trouble, sweep our opponent, throw our opponent. So, a lot of fun. Let's break it down uh, from a lot of different perspectives, from standing and the ground. Um, let me much go over here. So let's go from the standing first, and let's kind of just talk about the basic grip of the Kimura. I uh, start off with the wrist control, and then my other arms will come over right around the armpit, not directly over his shoulder, but right below it, and I'm gonna make a figure four grip. What I'm trying to do is make sure Leon has a bend in his arm right around a 90 degree angle, and at first we'll use a C grip to attach to our Kimura, and I'm gonna keep it close, all right? We'll eventually start using a five and five grip, so I actually remove, remove the use of my thumbs Right now, to connect to the Kimura, we're just gonna have a C grip. And we'll get, now you can finish your opponent's save. I, for somehow, was able to get control of Leon's arm. I could finish him here if I was gonna violently pull it over and break his shoulder, like adding a lot of speed and power to it. But right now, this is just a control position. What I do wanna point out is that how the Kimura starts moving. When I think about finishing a Kimura, using the Kimura as a true tool, I add rotation and pull. Like another thing about pulling my elbow in as well as almost rotating over his shoulder, all right? And this will almost happen in every single thing we do with the Kimura unless they go the other way to throw it. But if I want to finish him uh, or use it as a, a really uh, purposeful tool, I would think about rotating and pulling his elbow into my shoulder and trying to square myself up. Of course, Leon right now can just move around my body, can come around, and then we're gonna get a stupid little dance of trying to catch up. That was kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> catch up to, you know, I can't really submit him because I'm not going fast enough and he can kind of keep moving around. But when we get to locking onto the uh, body, whether uh, a leg or a control position or a cross body, that then the Kimura becomes really powerful as a finish. But let's say uh, we want to use it as we say we get this grip. We want to use it as a simple takedown. I can have a grip here and I can start using a foot sweep. So something, one of the first techniques I ever teach is one, how to get the Kimura from a standing perspective, understanding what the grip means. And what I do think about Kimura too, I'm always talking about pinning his arm to my body. Like, we're all one unit right now. It's not just hanging out in free space. And when I finish, it always stays with me. I'm not disconnecting and pushing it. That is with me. So, if let's say when I use a foot sweep, when I take a step forward, and I think about taking my right foot, trying to catch the on shin, and then I'm gonna throw him away. So I use that Kimura as a, a tool to just get rid of him, you know. Uh, sure, you can use this in a MMA scenario or, or a, a sports situation, but the problem is uh, I am letting go of my opponent. I am kind of getting rid of him. So if it's just a sports situation, he's gonna pop right back to his feet, nothing really cheap. But self-defense or, you know, and also you just do that and you create an opportunity to run, sure, very useful tool. But again, look at the same thing. And I see, uh, you know, after I go through my Kimura series with my students, they always tend to, oh, well, which they should, they always tend to attack the Kimura's because they've been drilling it nonstop for the past few weeks. But, you know, a, a lot of guys, we can try it. They get on this grip and they're able to maintain. So it's not a bad attack concept because the grip is so powerful. You really can't get to my back. You really can't take me down. There's so many things I can do from here. We'll get to some other uh, options too. But the first foot sweep, step right, left foot will travel as I'm pulling that elbow into my up shoulder. Sweep. 
Let him go. I could probably come down with him, but I don't want to kill him. When I, I am going to attack a Kimura from an offensive grappling perspective, I don't look at the top-down approach where my opponent's lead hand is lower than mine. So I'm here, I can come down. If this hand's up, you know, let's say it's an MMA fight, I have to do a lot to kind of get that hand down first. But it's easier when we're grappling, that hand's down, I can grab it, and my body falls right into it. That's an important thing when we we start attacking this from the ground, is that I'm not like, like reaching over, I get my whole body into it. You know, sometimes you see me tackle with movements where I kind of boom, I'm walking through and establishing my grip and keeping it nice and tight. Now I don't want that foot, so you're gonna pull it into that shoulder, sweep the leg out, let him go, and he falls right out. Okay, that's our first one, Kimura setup, as well as a Kimura foot sweep. Okay, uh, let's go next. So another popular way you will find the Kimura is when someone is uh, shooting a double leg, going for a tackle, or like a midline double. If they're going all the way down to the ground, uh, the Kimura, let's say they shoot a traditional, traditional wrestler's double where they shoot all the way down to the ground, uh, the Kimura starts going away. But if someone's shooting on the midline, boom, we're going for a traditional tackle, uh, the Kimura shows up. So, as Leanne makes his entry, I don't care what he uses for entry here, this is the spot where our Kimura shows up. Traditionally, we would turn in, boom, wizard, fall hard, and defeat the takedown. But now we're actually gonna go with it and snag our Kimura grip, okay? Now, sometimes it's great to kind of stop the, the forward progress. You really can't go any farther. Uh, if my, don't, you don't have to start driving me forward. If my momentum, uh, his, our momentum keeps going forward, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna continue doing my technique. So all I'm gonna do, is if my feet aren't in line, which they are right now, I see my leg is back, I'm gonna step my feet in a line. Now I'm just gonna sit and use my left foot to catch right on the inside of Leon's thigh and throw him over my shoulder. Sit, catch, whoop, kick, okay? So now this position, uh, camera guy, yep. Gosh, camera guy, it's all official, you know. Uh, so now we're in one of the positions we call, call Kimura Trap, where I'm gonna get into a little deeper in this, but I wanna uh, just show us this position right now where I'm almost teed off to my opponent and I'm taking that Kimura grip and pulled it really tight into it. So there's a whole series that you can find it on YouTube anywhere. Uh, one of my favorite guys, uh, Dave Avalon, uh, he's a uh, teacher in Las Vegas now at Extreme Couture. I had a great time rolling with him last time I was there, uh, but he's a Kimura wizard and Kimura trap wizard. So we're gonna stay right here for now and then my, th my opponent has uh, really a couple options. We'll get into his smart option which is turning to me, but if he turns away from me, it's almost like he Kimura's himself. And I'm gonna look to finish two ways. If he doesn't do anything or he turns away, I'm gonna put his hand on the ground, and then I'm gonna use it the first way, a little more traditional. I'm gonna put my hand, at, our hands on the ground, get my body up, walk all the way around, sit, and I'm now when I'm sitting down, I have my elbow to the ground, and his hand starts coming off the mat. I can finish right here, but because I'm a dick and I wanna make it stronger, I'm gonna whip my leg over his head, capture his head, sink in, and finish. You okay? Yep. Let's do that whole thing again. Yeah, I shoot his double. I turn it to a capture. Okay. I right, sit, kick. I then roll right off the bat and get my hand to the ground, right? And then we'll go for the dirty finish. I then keep my elbow right in the ground and turn into his neck. I'm being very nice right now, but I'm leaning into Leon's neck and then I have that crank there. Call it a dirt, dirty Kimura or you know, I'm a little too lazy to walk all the way around the body. Just stay on that side and finish. You're having a fun time trying to keep up, keep up, keep up with us, huh? Yeah, I don't know where you guys are gonna end up, so. <laughs> all right, so uh, he, he shoots that shot. Boom, grab my, grab my Kimura grip, sit, kick, hands to the ground. First option, walk all the way around it. Sit back, leg over the head, finish. Second option, hand to the ground, stay where you are. Turn your hips around, lean into his head, and I make sure, sorry buddy, I make sure my elbow's below, my forearm's below his elbow, and add that nice tight finish at the end. So, uh, very powerful tool. It's, uh, if you get used to, it's weird if you're a wrestling background because you want to go the other way so bad. But if, if your opponent has got a big shot on you and you're going down, Snagging that Kimura grip. And now that finish. It's a nice tool to uh, count on that double leg or count on that tap. Let's look at something very similar uh, when uh, you're saying an MMA fighter, you get pinned against a cage, or you're just in wall combat. That Leon shoots that tackle. 
boom. Now I'm pinned to the cage. And most of the time, just like any other time, we would try to spawn the fan. I don't look wizard in, get my leg back, come for my underhook and all that. But let's say my opponent is really good. He's driving that head up. He's really preventing me underhook. My, I can't find my front head. I can't turn my hips in. What am I left with? The Kimura, all right? So, same thing. And sometimes, not a lot, lot not, let's say it's not more than sometimes. A lot of times, if I can't get wrist control right away, I'm still gonna tap that top side grip, all right? And when I tap that top side grip, I'm almost thinking about taking my pinky and weaving it through and capturing his forearm. I have long enough arms to do that sometimes, but in general, it's there. Now I establish my grip. And then I follow the same principles I put, like we did in the beginning when I first taught you the setup. I pull it into my shoulder and then drive me on into the cage. Whoa, there's his head. I may be able to finish here, but in fact, in fact it's better just disconnect. Kick him in the face. Well, <laughs> whatever you want to do after that, kick him in the face, it sounds fun. So, he shoots again. Boom, turn into it, I establish my grip. Okay, or he's took it, taking such a good shot that I, I, oh man, I'm going that way. I gotta get my grip, boom, out, you know, whatever. Uh, again, it's, it's in this particular situation, it's a tool, not a submission. I'm using it to get my opponent's weight up, clear him off of me, and then I can disconnect and get off the cage. One more time. He shoots, boom, turn in, weave that first hand, establishing my grip, pulling up on the elbow, and then I think about just taking his elbow and driving behind my steering. Bam. Push back, disconnect. Now you're ready for hitting him, hitting him, running, shooting yourself, whatever comes next. So a really great uh, application of the Kimura grip when you are getting uh, shot on against the wall, cage, and you cannot find your underhook, your wizard's not working, you can't find a front headlock, uh, and the Kimura grip is a great option to get back out. Okay, let's look at this from, uh, the look at Kimura from a little bit of a self-defense perspective or my opponent's taking it back. Same thing, my opponent's got a body lock on me in my back. Uh, I don't care if you're in a sport fight or a, a self-defense situation, you know, vitally important to get out. So, let's go along. Uh, first one, Leon's got my back. It is called an arms free. And I'm gonna look to attack whatever side he's got on top. I don't have to do this, but it's not a bad uh, idea. First, I'm gonna pull up on that elbow. Now, pull me up the elbow starts getting a little space and my thumb's gonna jam in. And that, that thumb is typically gonna give me a little bit of space to find my grip. Now to push that grip down, walk forward, sit. And we're right back into our, sorry about the knee and the head, life happens, position. Okay, so again, he's got my back. Boom. Getting my body weight down, hiking up that elbow, snaking my hand through, punching the grip out, okay? This two-on-one grip is giving me power, okay? So I'm able to break Leon's grip while maintaining control of him. Walk my body out, sit, kick. And we're right back to our finishes. Another one of our, my favorite throws is a Sotomaki combing. And I used to get buried in a lot by this, uh, my, one of my uh, old training buddies. And when I look to do something really similar, I'm gonna attack the elbow. And maybe I can get the grip or maybe not, but I'm gonna turn into a throw. So. I tap the elbow, drop this leg back into a forward roll. Uh, drop my throw here. Now it's really important when I've done this roll, I am one elbow away from Leon having my back. Meaning, if I lose this elbow, Leon then has my back, okay? So I had to keep this elbow the whole time, and now I'm fighting for my grip. I can finish with a Kimura or straight arm lock. Again. So we're here, pulling up my elbow, and I think I'm doing a full roll of my left shoulder, boom. Right away, I've already snaked that hand in, and I'm gonna be looking to get my Kimura grip. Break or break. One more time. Okay, now, if I want to, I can pull up on the other side too. Really, I feel this side is higher, like in his hands are a little shifted to my right, so I'll pull it up, Arm to the mat, take your roll, walk in your grip, finish, or finish. Cool, there's uh, two, two nice defenses for when your opponent gets your back and how to use that Kimura grip, the Kimura gripping concept to get out of it. We're gonna hit actually uh, a reverse Kimura grip, another two on one grip, uh, similar to Kimura, just upside down. And how we catch this a lot is off our Russian, all right? 
And a Russian, I'll have a whole Russian series, I'll go later, but when I get a Russian, I have a two on one grip here. And I have my lead hand on his uh, upper shoulder bicep area, forehead the chin, and I have a C grip at his wrist level. All I wanna do is punch my hands together. All right now we're in a reverse Kimura grip position. Very first throw we're gonna do, or take down, is I'm gonna take my hands together, walk out a little bit, and drag his hand out. Sorry, buddy. I'm gonna yeah, keep it on the ground, and now I have his back. What's up, Pete? Again, I hit my, boom, establish my grip, forehead the chin, circle out, hand to the ground, and I keep that hand on the ground, and then work to his back. Just get your knees real quick. Get your knees, yeah. So when I work to the back, I'm gonna be looking almost very traditional wrestling. Right, if I'm in looking for MMA, my left hand's gonna be around his hip, right hand around his uh, uh, bicep, and you're looking for ground and pound and control. If you're looking to start attacking, from a grappling perspective, look to take his back, submit him, go to switch your knees in. So, I can make that takedown and grip much, much worse. So, from here, I take my arm, punch it into his, uh, like the bend of his arm, and fold my other hand on top. And I'm using the bottom of my forearm as a blade to dig in to the meat of Leon's arm. So boom, boom, bam. Okay, you can start seeing how it reacts already. Punch it down. Very uncomfortable for him. Keep the hand on the ground. Start moving to the back. One more time on that one. Boom. Bam. Drag. And down. Uh, another great uh, throw we could do off this is, uh, I don't know the name of it. Uh, I think it comes from Sambo, but we, I just call it the reverse Kimura throw. So boom, boom. I'm gonna stuff his hand to his hip. As I stuff his hand to his hip, both my feet are gonna come together and I sit to my left hip. The guy falls over. Now, you think you'd probably get a submission from here. Uh, what I simply do is I take my left hand, trap his wrist, come to the hip, then peel the hand up at the end to fit myself into side control. I'm sure it's probably some funky way you can submit, but let's be honest, getting on top in that position is just smart. So one more time in that one. Shrug, catch, stuff, sit, boom, trap the hand, climb on top for side control. One more time. Boom. Stuff it, sit, trap, come on top. All right, let's look at the Kimura now from a closed guard position. Uh, when we're gonna attack the Kimura, I need to have the hands on the outside of my hips, whether his hands are on the ground or they're just on the outside of my hips and I have a pocket to sit up. A uh, very, very basic way I start doing this myself is that when he is posturing up, puts a hand on my hips, okay? Then I come underneath the prayer position and bring his body back down, boom, all right? From here, I'm, I, I need to get Leon's weight back a little bit more to expose his arms. So my hands stay right here. I use my legs to force his hips back. Once that happens, the Kimura is exposed, start to move his head, because I just want to make sure you don't get hit as they come up. And then my left foot, or opposite foot, okay, if I'm gonna go to my right towards the camera, my left foot's gonna come on the mat, and I push and rock myself up, okay? I forcefully try to inhabit the rock up on my elbow so that my hips are high in the air. Without going for the Kimura, we're gonna go for a hip bump sweep first, but I'm gonna attack my Kimura grip by pulling it nice and tight, then drop my knee to the ground. As I drop my knee and jump, uh, Josh, let's come over here. Now I'm starting to establish my Kimura grip. You see my hand snaking through, and then I finalize it. Boom. You can't finish a Kimura from top mount, okay, but I can't establish a grip. If I can't establish a grip, I'm trying to make sure I keep that box, that 90 degree box that we talked about in the beginning. So I have it there, and I look at his legs. I back step out, sorry, Leon. Knee and hip then turn my hips all the way into them, like we were before, leg over the head, finish. Let's look at that again. So we're here, I hit the prayer, I got him down. I force him back, ride my body up. I'm trying to shift my weight to that point. So I'm trying to off balance Leon, pull his elbow up. Now, a lot of my students make the mistake of keeping this knee high and trying to roll him over. Drop the knee to the ground. That automatically 
forces Leon back, weave your hand through, connect your Kimura. Look at his legs, slide your leg out, then drive that same knee into the hip, walk your hips in, settle back, Kimura or Kimura. One more time. Boom, turn it out, drop, kick up, trap. He's already going. Boom. Now we're establishing that grip. We talked earlier about a five on five grip. When I'm a, uh, when I have the hand on the mat, I don't go from C grip anymore. I have all five hand, all my, all ten fingers on his hand, and I'm pushing down. All right. Drag that leg out. Switch my grip. Switch my stance. Switch my hips. Leg overhead. Okay. Uh, very same position. We're gonna get our hips up. Bring him down. Get control of the head. And as I settle him back, opposite foot in the mat, rock up. And I tap my Kimura, okay? I'm tacking my hip bump sweep. So the way I look at it, in my mind, it's easier for me to finish the Kimura if I get him on his back. But what happens, a lot of times when you're, a lot of times what happens is when you are in a hip bump sweep, they're gonna drive you backwards. As I drive me backwards, I find my grip and swivel my leg over. So now I'm in that teed off position. And we go back to one of the first things I taught is that I'm pinning his elbow to my shoulder, and then as a unit, I rotate over. I almost think I'm trying to take my elbow and put it in his ear. That makes a finish. Okay, we're here again. Boom, brought him down. He postures back up, I tap. He drives in, I find my grip. Okay, let's go back up really quick. Because I have this first, all right? My other hand's almost lying in wait. So that's where my C grip comes in. As he drives me in, my thumb catches. Establishes it, steers and pulls that elbow into my shoulder. I want this is all one unit. Then I, I don't push his arm to finish Kimura. I rotate my torso, thinking about putting his el my elbow in his ear. That's it. One more time. Boom. Attack your grip. And if I can, I weave in arm back, you don't have to. As he drives in, fall back and finish. All right, uh, one of my favorite positions uh, for the Kimura is a knee shield half guard. Um, if I look at guard systems, we just did a closed guard Kimura uh, hip bump sweep, then a Kimura actual finish. But a closed guard is a, it's not a, to me it's almost like not a universal guard. I know it's almost one of the first guards we all learn, we all learn in Jiu Jitsu, but if Leon's versus me, uh, or you know, I, uh, or someone bigger, that closed guard doesn't make sense. It's be harder to wrap around the person, harder to control the person, but you are in half guard all the time, whether you want to be or not. It's a universal guard that anybody can use it, and you're almost forced to be there, so why, might as well be good at it. Um, if you look at a lot of modern grapplers from the, the Greg Jones and Gordon Ryans and many others out there, uh, half guard is a big part of their game because it, it presents so many opportunities, not just for submissions, but for sweeps and escapes and all that as well. So, uh, Kamor is one of my favorite attack series from the knee shield half guard. I'll definitely have a whole other series on that half guard, uh, but right now, let's just look at the Kamor from there. So, when I am a knee shield half guard, now I'm looking to have, be on my right hip, my my lead leg or my top leg is defending. That's my shield. It can be in a variety of different places. I can have my legs closed. I can have my foot in his hip. I can have a butterfly hook in. I can just have the tip of the knee in. It doesn't matter, but this knee is an important part of my shield. It is my shield, okay? If I lose this knee and Leon has an unhook, I'm half past. I'm not in half guard anymore. I'm not doing anything. I'm just waiting for the slow death, all right? At the same point, my right side, my hands would be facing my open side. So my right side is my open side. And one of Leon's main objectives would be to get control of my head, put my hands, uh, push my knees down and open. So I'm always defending this side, which makes it great opportunity for Kimura. Let's come a little lower for now, right about there. Okay, good. So when I am defending on the inside, uh, there's two ways we, uh, we go for Kimura. One is the old school way that I barely teach anymore, but it is, it is, it is a thing that I kick my leg through and bring my body into his arm and find my Kimura, okay? This works, okay? You can absolutely finish here. Uh, I'll go into a little bait later to actually make it better, but this is a, a viable thing. It's probably when we first all learned uh, where we tapped Kimura from half guard. 
So yeah, so I, mean, I, I I can't finish that one. I have to, well, I can, but I have to do a lot of other steps to get to the finish. Where I do finish a Kimura a lot is where I attack the Kimura, like I almost have to attack a leg lock, and I'm bringing my body to it. So I hook onto the arm, okay, if I'm defending, that arm is there, and I bring my whole body and chest in, and I snag that grip, okay? I keep my knee, I deepen my knee shield, okay? So my, my uh, shin is all the way across his hips, and I push into his hips to stretch him out, and then finish my Kimura from there. So I stay on that side of the body. When I lose the knee, Leah gets on top of me, and it's, it's almost easy for him to start straightening his arm and causing a lot of problems for me, especially if he's of equal strength, all right? But when I keep my knee in, I have a lot of frame or a lot of distance between Leon and I, so I'm allowed to work on it. So if he's here, kind of in the center, and I bring my whole body in and attack that arm, almost like I'm doing a mini inversion, but not really, all right? Really important that my shin is driving into his hip. I pull the elbow to my shoulder, I add rotation to my back to finish. One more time. Boom, oh, I'm here. Whole body comes in and finish. So, let's go back to that first Kimura, okay? Um, Josh, why don't you come right around over here. So, let's say I go to that first Kimura and I lose my knee shield, all right? One thing, now this is something that I will do, let's say my knee, let's say Leon, come back up real quick. Let's say Leon clears my knee, boom, I will tap a Kimura grip right off the bat to save me. Then, I, because well, he, he doesn't want to keep his arm out, so a lot of times they bring it to their own hip, or I force it into their own hip, and then I shrimp against it. So I straighten ourselves out. Now I use that same knee shield concept to punch our hands out, boom. And now I'm right back to my finish. If I am in this position and Leon postures up, I can clear, bring your arm up too. I can get a leg over his head, into his hip, and finish the Kimura that way too. Little bonus uh, if they do do that, but not necessarily. It's something you would use all the time. Your Kimura trap, a Kimura attack, whether you're coming through the knee through the hole, or you lose your knee and you punch back in, is something that you should uh, use a lot. It's something that I like though. It's a huge part of my game. Uh, I love the Kimura. I said in the beginning, I think it's like a, not a get out of jail free card, but pretty close. Like you can almost establish a whole uh, fighting system just on using the Kimura and how you can uh, save you and, and, and control your opponent in a variety of positions. So that's a great one from the knee shield half guard. I, I want to add one uh, more sequence to that knee shield half guard. And you can find this knee shield half guard, uh, but a lot of times you're just going to find it by establishing a Kimura grip when you're in trouble. So let's say I hit. Uh, my Kimura and I lost my arm again, okay? One of the things I'll do is I'll open my guard and bait my opponent into passing me, all right? This will happen once or twice against a guy and you'll probably never hit it again, but you will be able to establish this grip in other situations. And then I go for my Kimura now. I punch his hand on the ground, he will tap or he has to roll. And look where we are, Kimura trap again. I put my hand on the ground, come up, finish, all that shit. So it is, uh, if uh, I consider myself a Kimura hunter, like I just tend to find it anywhere. You know, if I have my opponent in side control, he has a leg, you know, uh, let's come over to side control. And I am able to find my grip. You know, I'm able to absolutely create a finish from that. So it's just kind of the power of the Kimura that you can hit it in anywhere. Uh, my thought process too on this is like, once I establish that Kimura grip, it's part of it. Uh, I'm not letting it go. Like you have, you have to do a lot of work to get rid of my hands. So if I have a Kimura grip, I can not only escape, I can sweep you and I can submit you without ever changing the grip of my hands. That's pretty cool, okay? So let's, let's look at that again one more time. I'll go for that knee shield happen. Um, and where you're going for, you lost it. You just open your guard, he comes through, drag it right to the mat. And finish. So a uh, very uh, fun one, but works really well if you're bottom side control, snagging that grip and using it as an escape. Lee has to do a throw by pass. And as he throws by, I'm turning in, and he comes down to finish his pass. I establish my Kimura. Something that happens a lot, regardless of what position you're in, as they're trying to pass your guard, a lot of times they're gonna try to get your head too. So if you are, come back up. As, you know, as my guard is getting passed, I have my hands here. I'm gonna find the opportunity for a Kimura grip. Okay, I find it all the time. It's there, you just gotta hunt for it. You see it, right? And the same thing happens. I just turn into him and sweep him, okay? 
and stay from here. More trap or come up. Uh, the next sequence, when I go to passing the guard with the Kimura, uh, I'll, go, I'll go through the whole sequence of Kimura trap, uh, how to get the back control, as well as the armbar from there. Let's just play uh, the Kimura from a pure sport perspective, uh, grappling, and I'm gonna pass the other guard. But instead of passing his guard, I'm gonna go for a Kimura grip. Now, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of we're not gonna get a whole video about the strategies in this, and, there, and there's tons of the concepts on here, but let's just say, I've split the middle for Leon. Uh, whether he actively sat in and maybe tried for like a single leg, or I worked my way in and I split his middle, maybe I'm gonna go for a knee cut pass. Instead, I'm gonna go for a rolling Kimura. So when I come in here, I make sure if his head's here, a lot of times you do come in, they're gonna try to grab and keep their head to the middle, or look up, come up for a single leg. So I'll pass his head over, and then I bring my knee down to his hip and my arm over his arm, and I'm gonna establish my outside trap, put my hand on the ground, knee to the ground, hit a forward roll, boom, boom. Establish my Kimura grip and stay right here, okay? Now we're in that traditional Kimura trap position. We've already come up and finished a Kimura two different ways, but let's look at a natural reaction for him. Because we know rolling away from me, roll away really quick, turns his Kimura on, his most logical thing is to roll into me. Now he's, in order to, to actually do anything, he has to start coming up. When he starts coming up, stay right there, and go back down a little bit, okay? There's this pocket here. And this pocket is where we slide our body in. All right, now from this position, I have two major attacks, a little bit more, but let's just look for two. If uh, you're equal size or you're able to get your body in much lower, you have a back attack. But for me, it's a great spot to hit an arm bar. So my right leg is to come over his head and I hook the back of my knee on his head. I then use that to pull Leon's head to the ground, open my left leg, come over, cross my feet on his head, and finish arm bar. Brucey says, good job. Okay, bud, good job. You're doing good. Leon's getting submitted, you know? This is Kamora, Kamora Thursday. Yes, thank you for the nut smell. I appreciate it. Okay. You want to do it? Good boy, good boy. Okay, go, go. Your, your dog's next life is going to be a black belt. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay. Right, okay. <laughs> See, uh, come on, don't let me put you away. Okay, good. All right, so here, I sit, pull up an arm, hit my trap, hit my forward roll, establish my Kamora grip, turn into him. Leon turns in. Slide my hips, okay? Again, leg over the head, pull, unwind, and trap, okay? Let's go right back to the Kimura position. So, another option, he comes in, boom, I hook. I'm able to snag his foot with my arm, all right? I pull him this way. As I pull him this way, I find my own shin. And then I take a triangle attack from the back, okay? Ah, maybe I'm strong enough, big enough, eh, submit him, not really, okay? If I do technical stand-up though, it works. Hand on the ground, I think about taking my sh the back of my calf and pulling into me. And I have a nice choke from there. So one more time on that one. I'll do the whole thing. Here, clear, ball, hook, roll, trap. He turns in, slide, whoosh, hook. I use this hook to bring him to my other hip, sit up with it, grab my triangle, okay? Then balance on my hand and pull back. So those are two options from uh, passing a guard into a rolling Kimura, uh, using that Kimura trap. If that rolling Kimura is a, a fun entry and you'll find a lot, it, it, it's there more than you realize. As I said earlier, the Kimuras, you just gotta hunt for them, you gotta see them, you gotta want them. Uh, anything I teach, anything I do, I really try to force my students, okay, today, work on this, you know? And in fact, after every lesson, I do specific drills that make sure they reinforce that, doing it over and over and over uh, in like a, a free space or a free, free form activity. And when you are sparring, when you are rolling that night, well, look for it, okay? Um, you're not gonna truly develop any technique unless you don't battle test it, if you don't pressure test it. And that's what sparring and rolling is for. You don't need to be a dick when you do that, but you do need to actually Train those and use those in a live environment if you actually want to do it for real. We could talk all day long about grabbing grips and doing this and sitting, but if you never tried it before, you never done it, it's not gonna work until you actually battle test it. So, uh, thanks for watching. That is our series on the Kimura Grip.